Hello guys, Justin Mr. 2000 here, and today I'm here to talk about Doomsday Clock Issue 4. Um, I finished reading this a couple of days ago, sorry the video is late. I just had dentists and everything, and like, bits and bobs, and I just, the video was like, I read it at like 10 o'clock last night, and I just didn't get round to recording it until now. Well, I've already tried to record it once, but I accidentally deleted the files. Idiot. Um, I'm calling myself an idiot, by the way. Not any of you guys. Right. Anyway. Written by Jeff Johns, and the art is by... Just let me check who the art's by. It's in the back. Um, Gary Frank is the illustrator, and... Brad Anderson is the colorist, the colorist, which is, must I say, awesome variant cover. I pre-ordered this version particularly for that cover because it looks amazing. And also, it's kind of fitting for the story because although he doesn't actually, that, this panel, don't get me wrong, this never appears as a panel. But it's symbolism, kind of. Because basically, this video is going to contain spoilers, as do most of my reviews for comics. Because especially when it comes to single issues, I find it hard to talk about them without going into spoilers. Because it's, um, it's difficult, because there's only so many pages there, so there's only so much you can work with. Um, but basically, it picks up with Rorschach and Arkham Asylum, or the new Rorschach. And it's kind of like, uh, he flashes back to his childhood and how, like, everything happened to him. And basically this entire issue is just finding out about the origins of the new Rorschach. And all of you who said he had some connection to the psychiatrist, give yourself a gold star. He is the son of the psychiatrist. See? This, this is how you write interesting characters, Marvel. Marvel. Marvel, look at me. Look at me, Marvel. Get your notebook out. Start making notes. Preferably, preferably don't make notes in this notebook. But, um, never mind. We'll check your notebooks on the way out. I don't trust any of you. <laughs> okay. Um, right then. Basically, we find out that he is the son of the psychiatrist and his wife. I forget the name of his wife or her profession. I don't think she was really that important, important in, in Watchmen. And to be honest, neither was the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist was just there for us to learn more about Rorschach, the original War the Rorschach Walter Kovacs. So, ultimately, they've turned a pretty minor character in Watchmen into something fairly important. It's like, thing is, it's, I like that, because it's a little detail you would have mi could have missed in the original that goes a long way. And, basically, the day the accident happened that Veidt orchestrated, his father died, but he survived and so did a lot of others from what he tells us in the narration but because of what happened to them they ended up being admitted to mental institutes or asylums because of what they saw and he while he's in this mental institute meets Mothman who the original Rorschach tells us was admitted admitted to an asylum uh, it's a passing comment in the original Watchmen it's pretty easy to miss uh, it's also in the movie, funnily enough. I will probably play the clip now. Rorschach's Journal. October 13th, 1985. 8.30pm. Meeting with Dryberg left bad taste in mouth. A flabby failure who sits whimpering in his basement. Why are so few of us left active? Healthy. 
and without personality disorders. The first night Al runs an auto repair shop. The first Silk Spectre is a bloated, aging whore, dying in a California rest resort. Dollar Bill got his cape stuck in a revolving door where he got gunned down. Silhouette, murdered. A victim of her own indecent lifestyle. Mothman's in an asylum in Maine. Um, and basically he meets the original Mothman. And Mothman starts teaching him about the Minutemen and the Watchmen. And before this he keeps saying, I'm not a fighter, I'm not a fighter. Like he keeps, he keeps the attitude he's not a fighter. But after this something changes. Like he learns about all the Minutemen and everything and the Watchmen and... The next panel we get is him seeing a psychiatrist, and they hold up a Rorschach test to him. And they're like, what do you see? And his response is, Rorschach. Which is not the name, in this instance, isn't the name of the test, is the name of the vigilante. And basically, then we get some other insignificant little details. Uh, and then it leads to the breakout, where him and Mothman... Basically, he decides, I'm going after Vite, that's it, I'm done sitting in this cell. So him and Mothman break out. How they break out is they light the laundry on fire and set the entire place ablaze. Hence why I said this is symbolism, I will explain why in a moment. But, basically him and Mothman get out, because you know, you gotta let everyone out during a fire, even if they are crazy. Uh, it's, you know, just, it's the done thing. And, uh, basically they escape, and... Mothman sees the flames, and he walks back into the flames, because, you know, Mothman attracted the light. It <laughs> I don't know why, but I chuckled at it when I originally watched it. When I, when I, when I originally read it, I chuckled at it, and I, I don't know why, it's kind of a grim thing to chuckle about, but, you know, Mothman, it, it, it's kind of dumb, but a, mo a, a guy called Mothman doing that, it, behaving like a moth, it's kind of dumb, but it also does kind of explain why he was in a mental institute in the first place. Uh, kind of like Joker's joke from Killing Joke, um, if you've ever seen it. I'll um, probably insert that now. You know, it's funny. This reminds me of a joke. See, there were two guys locked in a lunatic asylum. And one night, one night they decided they didn't like that anymore. They decided to escape. So they made it up to the roof, and there, just across this narrow gap, they see rooftops stretching across town, stretching to freedom. Now, the first guy, he jumps right across no problem, but his friend, oh, no way. He's afraid of falling. So the first guy, he has an idea. He says, hey, I got this flashlight with me. I'll shine it across the gap between the buildings and you can walk across the beam and join me. But the second guy said, what do you think I am, crazy? You just turn it off when I'm halfway across. More editing work, yay. But um, basically, that's how you kind of know that guy was crazy and it teaches you. But the reason why I say this is symbolism is because after this he gets the mask and everything and he goes out to try and find Vite. And that's kind of like, it's symbolism because that's when he became Rorschach. He walked away from the asylum as Rorschach, not as the child he went in as. Like, you know, it's kind of like he goes into the asylum a mentally fractured young man who's seen this alien attack and he comes out a vigilante basically he comes out a, a, a quote unquote hero because I, I I personally would be hesitant to call Rorschach a hero because of what he is but that's um discussion for another time actually once I've finished reading Death Note and Red Hood and Outlaws and everything and Watchmen I will actually do a video on that um but so it's kind of symbolism for like when he walked away from the burning asylum, he was something else. He wasn't what he went in as. Which I think is kind of neat, the foreshadowing. Uh, but anyway, after that flashback, we go back to present day, and it's him in Arkham, and you see a moth fly into a light and get zapped, and then that is the end of the issue. And um, it's basically part of what 
he talks about in, it in the Rorschach journal monologue type thing is him talking about how his father kept saying everyone tries to find a purpose and it he it's basically him explaining how he found his which was to follow in Carvax's footsteps which is pretty I must admit this cover just props to the guy props to this cover artist it is absolutely awesome it's probably my f second first or second favorite cover it's funny Pretty much nearly all the covers I got for uh, this were Rorschach related, minus the issue two because it didn't have an option for like a Rorschach type one. But um, that's pretty much it. Anyway, um, this is honestly one of the best books coming out of DC at the moment. You will not be disappointed with this. I highly recommend you go out and get this. It's like. Can't recommend it higher enough. Like, literally, if I gave it a rating system, it would be like a hundred out of ten. It's just, it's really good storytelling, and I really think companies like Marvel and IDW need to sit down and take notes because this is what we want to buy when we buy a comic. This, this is when we buy a comic. This is what we want. But something like, I'm not saying it's Watchmen reincarnate. Like, it, it's good. It's excellently written and at the end of the day when you've got the best in the business Jeff John's doing it it should be Jeff John's Judd Winnick Alan Moore but when you've got these kind of people writing a book you shouldn't be walking away like oh that was naff but you know what I mean like it's you've got some of the best names in the business on this book and they do not disappoint honestly just enough said go out and buy this Hello, why are you still here? Get to your comic shop. Go!